Hi my gardening angels, welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, I am Jess. Um, I am going to be showing you how to propagate succulents from leaf today. I am guessing most of you have already seen my video that was posted about two years ago on how to propagate succulents from leaf. Um, that video is a real old. Um, you guys loved it, which I was so thankful for because I spent a lot of time on it. Um, However, you guys asked so many questions, so I wanted to take this opportunity um, and use the questions that all of you have submitted into that post um, so that I can try to answer them as best as I can here and kind of have a summary video. And maybe for people who haven't seen it, this will be a better video to watch because more information will be in it. So I'm hoping this won't be super long. Um, but I'm hoping that this can kind of be your guys' opportunity to learn a lot about succulent propagation from a leaf. So first off the bat, if you have been struggling with succulent propagation from a leaf for a while now and you are looking for a better way to propagate your succulents, um, there are certain specifics that are going to be individual towards your situation or your climate, um, kind of your environment that you're trying to grow succulents in and those can be <laughs> those can be a huge factor in how successful you are with succulent propagation so if you guys go down to my description box or to the comment that's linked um you will find a link to my succulent propagation or becoming a succulent propagation master online course um it only takes about a week you'll get different lessons each day that you're able to read through answer some questions you'll be part of our really cool facebook group that does question and answers giveaways all that good stuff um please go check it out down below i think you guys are going to really enjoy it i have had a lot of really good feedback from it um i've seen a lot of successful photos coming out of it in our Facebook group, you'll have access to me answering your questions <laughs> right then and there. Um, I think it's it's built to really tailor your experience to you and help you learn how to propagate succulents in different types of environments um, so that if you ever move, it hopefully will be easier to transition into how that climate will work a little bit differently. But yes, please go check that out down below, link in the description box, link in the comments. I think you guys will really find it helpful. But if you are just beginning, this is going to be a nice little fun tutorial for you because I think that there's going to be a little bit of information to help you get started. Um, I think the biggest thing that I want to disclaim about succulent propagation from leaf is that it is... <sighs> It is painfully time consuming, or not consuming, but it takes a lot of patience. That's the only thing I can say and stress the most. I keep getting comments, well, I just removed a leaf a week ago and nothing's happening, so you're a, you're a liar. <laughs> no. <laughs> it takes m potentially months before anything could happen to your succulent. Succulents are a desert plant, meaning they store a ton of water in their leaves and they grow extremely slowly. If you've ever owned a succulent for a while and are now trying to move on to propagate it, you know that they grow painfully slow. The same goes for propagating a succulent by leaf, but about 10 times slower. So please keep that in mind. It's very much worth it, um, but it does take forever, okay? <laughs> Seeds are a whole different story. They also take forever, um, but let's talk about some leaves here. Okay, so first things first, when you're trying to propagate your succulent, you need to identify what kind of succulent it is. And I can't stress this enough because if you are a beginner succulent gardener, grower, whatever, if this is something that's somewhat new to you and you haven't propagated succulents before, you probably won't know this. But there are about what I would consider three different types of succulents 
that you kind of need to categorize which succulent you have into those categories to truly figure out how your succulent is going to propagate because each succulent propagates a little bit different. So I have a video that I will include a link to below that if you have not seen yet, I definitely recommend going and watching it because it has a lot of good information in there about identifying your type of succulent. Um, there's three different ways that a succulent can propagate. It's through a leaf, which is what I'm gonna be showing you today, um, through a cutting and through little offset babelets is what I call them, but um, they grow to the side and you cut those off. Um, it's truly important that you know which succulent can do which type of propagation because you might try to grow something from a leaf of a different succulent and nothing is going to happen because that's not how it propagates. So that could be really painful too and a lot of people get deterred because they're like, well, it didn't work. Well, your succulent can't propagate that way. So please go watch that video first and foremost so that you know which succulent or which category your succulent falls into, okay? Um, second, you need a healthy succulent. You can try leaf propagation as kind of a fail safe to try to save a part of your succulent that's dying and falling apart um, and it may or may not propagate. But if you wanna be truly successful in propagating your succulent, you need to have the most healthy succulent that you can get. So what I recommend is a lot of light, bright and direct sunlight is great, grow lights are great, um, and I mean sometimes they can be out in the sun, you just have to be careful for sunburn. Watering, as soon as the soil completely bone dry dries out, watering it because then that's going to promote the most growth because they're going to have access to that water that they need in order to grow. You want to make sure that it's completely dry though for watering so you don't rot. There's a whole bunch of other videos on that that you guys can go check out if you want more information and are worried about that. But essentially what you need to do if you're going to propagate your succulent is you want to make sure that you've watered your succulent about three days to a week before you're going to actually remove the leaves for propagation. I say this because and of course you guys there are caveats to all of this so you don't need to do any of this. However, this is kind of my way of telling you that you're going to be the most successful if you follow these steps. Of course, if you miss a few, it still might work for you, but um, this is going to be the best way possible in order to produce babies. Um, I, What I do is I water three days before I'm going to remove the leaves, and then I remove the leaves, let them sit for a while, and then they eventually grow. Um, so these have all been watered about a week ago maybe, so they're a little bit longer than I would have liked, um, but it is what it is. Okay, so now we're gonna move on to what I really enjoy, and it's kind of addicting, so be warned, all of your succulents will be mangled after this because you're going to have so much fun removing the leaf. Um, some leaves are super easy to remove, some are almost impossible, so you have to just kind of and try it and see what happens. Um, I have a few different varieties here today that I'm gonna show you how easily the, the leaf can come off. As counter as, as counterintuitive as this is, I actually find it a lot easier to remove leaves when your succulent is actually stretched out. So when it's etoliated, um, this is also a way you can fix etoliated succulents, but it makes it so that you can actually grab onto the leaf and wiggle it off gently without ruining the other leaves because they're a lot farther away. Um, I don't like atoliated succulents, they're very unhealthy, but they are very easy to propagate. So, <laughs> um, let's start with these ones. These are my, I'm gonna say I'm wrong again, Graptopatellum superbums. I say superbum. I've been told that's wrong, but I don't know if I can actually say it the correct way. <laughs> um, I'll include links to the names of these down below, guys, um, if I know them. But I have a whole little tray here of them today. These ones are all a little bit more stretched out than I would like them to be. Uh, but again, that's why I said they're a little easier to 
remove the leaves if they're stretched out. I have a leaf already falling off. Okay, so this first one, I'm gonna start removing some leaves here. So these ones are really easy to remove the leaf from, guys. All you have to do is like twist and wiggle and it easily comes off. And that is a really, really clean break. Um, again, super clean. And like I said, these ones are very easy to propagate because, or to remove the leaves from I'm just gonna go for this one and remove them all because this one's kind of struggling as it is. Um, for fun, I will show you a bad break. Um, so if you weren't able to get an actual clean break, and I don't know how great you guys can see this, but um, say, It was ripped off like this. You guys can kind of see that there. Um, because that will happen a lot where in the skinny part of the leaf, it will snap. Um, this one will not propagate. No matter how hard you try, it won't do it. Um, that's why it's so important to take your time and gently wiggle them off because otherwise it won't actually grow anything and you just wasted a leaf. <laughs> um, the other thing that you might have noticed that I did is I removed a lot of leaves and you definitely don't have to do this, especially if you don't have very many succulents. I personally have a ton of succulents, um, but I removed a lot of leaves and this is because there are power in numbers. This is completely true with succulent propagation. Not every leaf will make a baby. Not every leaf will make roots. Some leaves are going to make roots only and then die. And some are going to make babies only and then die. And every now and then, I would say about a third actually make a baby and roots together at the same time and successfully make another plant. Um, that is why I removed so many because I know that I'm going to have a much better chance of actually getting a succulent baby to grow if I have a lot of them slash if all of them work, then I have a ton more babies. So the other thing is, as I just said, some grow some parts, some grow others. Um, they also might grow them at different times. So I know with my, with some of my other succulents, some of them grow the roots and then the baby. As long as the parent leaf that you removed from the plant is still alive, meaning it's not completely dried out, crusty brown, dead, then I still count it viable and just keep waiting because there's still a potential that it will grow into something. If it's completely crusted out, it's not really going to do much. So that's my little piece there. So with these, the next step would be to put them in a darker, dry place. Um, I put them in a cardboard box and put them on a north facing window. Here is where I just leave the leaves. Some of these can be moved. This one has little baby, baby leaves. Here's some little roots. They can probably be moved over. Um, this one is very yellow, opaque, I guess. This one won't grow anything, so I can just throw it away. It gets very little light. Um, I just wait until something starts growing and then I move it into a tray of dirt underneath my grow lights, which I will show you both of them there. All right, here is my propagation tray. As you can see, it's quite far underneath the grow light here. Ooh. Those are my little seeds. I'll show you them, because it's they're cute. No. Oh. Okay, back to the tray. This is my little propagation tray here. We have that row of Pachyphytum compactums. There's a super bum. Pachyphytum compactum, Lilicina, super bum. We have some jade, um, Calancho, Panda, and some new leaves back there. I water them about once a week or every few days, kind of just spritz them a little bit because. Um, 
their roots are really fragile and they might not be in the soil yet so you really have to keep an eye on them and make sure they're not burning or they're not drying out um, you can also rot them I would say that that's common but not as common as letting the roots dry out for soil you're gonna want fast draining soil I use miracle Grow cactus soil you can use really any type of soil you just have to change the watering aspects of it but i recommend fast draining soil it's going to be your best bet you want to find this fun medium for light where your baby isn't going to stretch too much because it's trying to find more light and it's not going to burn to a crisp because there's too much light so i have them under my grow lights but about a foot away from my grow lights whereas the adult plants i have only about six inches so I have them a little farther so they don't burn, but they still have enough light that they hopefully won't stretch too much. Bright indirect sunlight also works great. Again, I'm going to stress this because I think it is extremely important. Please be patient with your succulents. This is such a time pr process. I can't even explain to you how, how painful this is to wait and watch them, but I promise you it is worth it. So I have, or had, well this one I can't really count anymore, but I have four of these little super bums and about a year ago I had one. And I made all of these from that one, I think the parent one eventually died, whoops, um, but I have those ones. So now I'm going to show you some of the little different stages. Of the babies I have a few of these that I started propagating back in February it is currently middle of July so please keep that in mind um, we'll go with the second stage so these ones are newer I don't know exactly how old they are look at that little guy he's so cute he's so tiny um, but not much going on there these ones I just pulled out of my cardboard box and are now going to be moving over to the grow light box. They're really little. They have really little roots. Um, I'll get a close up of these guys later. All right, this one's a little bit older. Um, I would say like four months maybe. So you can kind of see that there's not very many roots to it. Um, again, that's fine. Okay, this one's about four months as well. There are a lot of roots to it. Um, he's about the same size as like my pointer finger nail, if that makes sense. Okay, now these are the ones that I started as a leaf back in February. So the leaf, the parent leaf is now removed. These are about the same size as a thumb. Um, I, I can just show you on some dirt in here. But once you remove the leaf, ooh, well, let's just do it. Okay, so this one, the leaf is not crunchy, dry. It's still pretty malleable, which means there's still water in it. Um, I'm impatient. I take it off. You can leave it as long as you want. Um, it usually falls off on its own. I just take my little pinchers and kind of pinch the base. You have to just be careful not to get any roots. We're good. No roots. Um, all the roots stayed on the little baby. And then you just... Dig a little hole in the soil. And plant it in. Plant the roots down as best you can. And just let it grow. I'm probably just going to leave this guy here, for being honest. That's essentially it, guys. That's like the whole life cycle of a succulent um, when propagating it by leaf. And then they eventually grow up to be a little bit bigger. Like I said, this stretching here, not great. I'll probably remove all those leaves later. But 
just so you guys know. Um, so now what I want to do that we kind of went through all of the different stages is I want to show you a few different other succulents, kind of what they look like. Um, some of the leaves that are harder to remove, what I usually do. So this one, again, super stretched out. I went like a few days without my grow light on and all my succulents just whoosh, went searching and they'll grow back normal. They won't re-shrink, but they will fix themselves eventually. But, um, so now I just get to propagate a bunch. But anyways, these ones are really easy to remove the leaves from. Um, this is a Pachyphytum Compactum. I've done a harvest video on it. All of them are now stretched out, but I like just snapping off the leaf. Um, I'm hoping you guys can actually hear it. I'll be really quiet. So yeah, that's essentially it for those guys. Just kind of getting all the other ones out of there. Um, this is a dead leaf that I found, but if your leaf kind of looks like this, uh, when it's on a parent leaf, that's kind of when it would be completely out of its nutrients. The way that leaf propagation actually works is that when you remove a leaf from a succulent, so say this leaf, this is now called the parent leaf, because it came from the parent plant and your new baby is going to be growing off of the parent leaf and will eventually look like this now if there was no baby on here and your leaf was a little bit see-through like this one i would throw that away because it won't prop it probably won't grow a baby after that um but essentially everything that your new plant needs is all in this little leaf. Um, so it has the water, it has the nutrients, it has enough to grow roots and a new baby, and then send it on, send it on its way. Um, this will eventually shrivel up and dry out. It first kind of gets wrinkly, a little squishy maybe, um, but it eventually dries out and you can remove it or it will just fall off naturally. So now I wanna show you my Lily Cena. I love this succulent. Um, this is Probably my favorite. I think Lola's are my favorite that I have, but Lily Cena's are close to my heart because I made my wedding bouquet out of these. Um, but anyways, this one's a little deformed on this side here, but really pretty succulent. Echeveria, Lily Cena, um, or that's what I call it. Again, I don't know if I ever say any of these right. But I have two little babies. These ones are really hard to grow from a leaf. So if you can get these ones to go grow, kudos um these are the two little babies that i have right now they are so cute um this one's a perfect little rosette baby and then this one actually has three babies um again i will get a close-up of this one so i can show you guys because it is so cute all right so now i want to remove the leaf of this succulent as you can see this one is a lot easier to remove the leaf from just because the leaves are so spread out and so much farther away from each other with this type of succulent what you can do is you can start either removing a few in the middle i wouldn't recommend doing that i try to lift up the succulent a little bit and i try to remove the very furthermost bottom leaf um so that would be this one here these ones are a little bit more tricky. You kind of want to get a good hold onto the base of the succulent. Um, and then with your other hand, you're just going to kind of re gently remove it. Um, if they aren't going to snap off right away, you just wiggle it back and forth until it comes off. Um, now I'm going to go back over to this side and remove these ones because these are the further bottom ones. I'm getting a lot of really clean breaks, which is really good. Um, kind of gets easier once you go up because you can actually reach 
<laughs> whereas in the bottom ones that are kind of like tucked into the dirt they're a little difficult but but now i have a bunch of little lilicina leaves that hopefully will turn into little lilicina babies now this is an ava avavoides avavoides um i don't have any still attached to the leaf but i did bring two little babies to show you because they are really cute So here's one of them. Here's another. Super cute. Okay. This is a really fun plant. It's also kind of starting to stretch. It hasn't actually moved up, but you can kind of see that it's lighter in this corner and the leaves are kind of falling down. A sign of stretching. This one's going to be really difficult because the leaves are really thick and curved um and i have a feeling i will get a not a clean break on some of these but so if you can see which ones are on the bottom again that's the one that you want to start with first so i think i'm going to try to go for this leaf here um again try to kind of pick up the succulent as best you can get a good hold on to it and then gently wiggle it off. I can't see it, so I'm kind of challenged. Okay, sweet. Okay, so this one I got a really clean break on. Um, I don't know if you can see it, but I got actually part of the stem, which is totally fine. Doesn't hurt the succulent at all. Um, it will just be scar tissue on the succulent, but really clean cut. And I'll show you guys kind of these clean cuts in a close up at the end, but. These ones make me so nervous. <laughs> also, do not feel bad, you guys, if you can't get a clean break on a succulent leaf. I have brutally ripped apart a lot of leaves in my day um i did not today surprisingly i usually rip at least one i thought i i grabbed this one in hopes that i would rip one because i wanted to be able to show you guys how it would rip off naturally um because normally it does rip on me um but instead it ripped off all the stems to water my succulent babies i use a garden syringe um again all of my stuff will be linked down below. The grow light, the syringe, my succulent propagation course. Um, you can go check them out for yourself. Um, I use the garden syringe. I just find it really easy. I also use a spray bottle. I <laughs> my personal preference is to spray the water and then use the syringe because the water doesn't bubble. Um, you definitely don't have to do that. But I water it, like I said, three days, every three days to a week maybe spraying them every day kind of depends on when I actually remember to which is great they're pretty forgiving um, in terms of being watered the other thing that I want to mention though on watering is I have grow lights so my succulents are under lights all the time therefore they dry out a lot faster so you might not be watering every three days to a week you might be watering once a month so please keep that in mind because it can make a huge difference Again, I would go over that in the succulent propagation course, um, but I think that's something that a lot of people miss and they rot their succulents because they're following my watering schedule, which is much different than what yours should be. Just kind of to wrap it up, you can propagate your succulent in a lot of different ways. I personally love leaf propagation. I find it super rewarding. Um, this is something that I, it, that tests my patience a lot honestly but that I find so rewarding in the end because you can grow an entire plant out of just a single leaf which is just very unique to me another tip that I want to put into this video um, that a lot of people struggle with are mealy bugs you guys might not have a standard to compare this to 
but if you start noticing that your succulent is growing really slowly or this leaf kind of has them or has these scar marks or has little bubbles on the leaf you should really check for mealybugs because they target new growth that's what they thrive off of um, and so they love succulent babies um, and it will eat your new growth and you won't get a succulent plant so I will include a link down below for what you should be looking for for mealybugs because that is something I would say almost 90% of succulent gardeners run into and it's a huge issue they're really hard to get rid of um, I have what I use down below please go look at that watch the identifying video because I think you guys will find that one really helpful um, and of course as always please leave your questions and comments down below because I will try to answer all of them I want to make this as educational for you guys as possible because I truly find this incredibly satisfying and fulfilling and I think you guys will really enjoy it as well if you find yourself struggling in a few months come back and check out the online course hey guys this is your chance to get in on this succulent propagation course this is the curriculum here we have and uh, one on identifying succulents your personal environment and then how it applies to all these different types of propagation I think something special here is reading the leaves. There's a few quizzes. This is super helpful information if you guys are tr struggling to propagate succulents. There's giveaways, there's one-on-one -on -one support from me, and there's this super special Facebook group that you can be a part of. I post little updates of succulents. I wanna see people's succulents that they're propagating and we do specific giveaways and fun stuff like that. I am so thankful that you guys joined me today. Please subscribe to our channel if you haven't for more videos on succulents and succulent propagation in different varieties. I have a lot of plans coming up on specific succulents and um, different ways to propagate. And please give this video a big thumbs up if you found it really helpful. All right, guys, that's it for today. Thank you so much for joining, and I will see you guys later. Bye. Here's a close-up of those babies. Here's that single Lily Cena. And here's that three Babelette one. Isn't that super cute? There's no way to promote that. That is genetic. They have to choose it on their own. Here are clean cuts from a bunch of different leaves. This is a very healthy cut.